is rise of kingdoms releasing new legendary commanders faster than they ever have before i've gotten lots of comments from you guys saying that they need to slow down but have things actually changed over the last couple of years today we're going to go over that as well as the patch notes for the new tides of war update that just released this morning so make sure you stay tuned but first what's going on guys cheers okay first of all let's talk about the release speed of new legendary commanders for season three and season of conquest now in my previous video i talked about the possibility that we could be getting osman prime just to be clear that is not confirmed we may not actually get him at all i think we may be but unless he's in the game it's all just speculation and one of the things that a lot of people commented was that they need to slow down on the release of new commanders because we just got luce and gorgo and now we're already talking about whatever is next and that's fair but i think one of the things that kind of influences people to feel this way is that on youtube like for my channel or maybe chiskel or other content creators for rise of kingdoms we like to talk about things as soon as they become news as soon as they are something that we can talk about we like to talk about them and so it may feel like new commanders are being talked about constantly right but that's just because as content creators like we have to be kind of on the cutting edge of what is the latest and greatest thing so just because we start talking about a new commander doesn't mean we're going to get that new commander for maybe weeks or months after we actually discuss it so then that begs the question okay well how often do we actually get new legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms well this is a website called riseofkingdoms.org i actually built this website i think back in 2020 and i haven't really updated it since 2021 this was mainly a project that i worked on as i was kind of building my youtube channel and also when we were all stuck inside i didn't have that much to do so i wanted to make a website and just see if i could do it but this is an interesting website because it's kind of a time capsule it's kind of locked in time from 2021 and as you can see the mightiest governor release order uh ends with nebu so it's quite outdated here and obviously since i made this website things have changed quite a bit now when you enter season three you get access to the season of conquest commanders and you can choose which commander you get for any given wheel or mightiest governor event but one thing that you're going to notice here is that the number of days in between each release of a new commander cycle is 56 and what this means is that if you are joining rise of kingdoms today as a brand new player in the newest possible server then you're going to experience a new commander every 56 days that's one commander for four consecutive cycles now i'll admit i haven't played pre kvk or kvk1 in years now so it could be completely different but as far as i know it's still about 56 days in between mightiest governor events and wheels of fortune the main thing that changes is again once you enter season three of kvk then you start to get access to season of conquest which means you'll get access to basically everything from attila and down you'll get access to all that plus all the new stuff that came out after nebu was released so one thing that we know for sure is that back in the day in 2020 and in 2021 and even before that if you were in a new kingdom you would get access to new commanders every 56 days and that's pretty fast and you also don't have to just take my word for this there's also reddit posts like this one that basically from four years ago keep track of you know which day we actually got access to Richard, Yi Songye, Genghis Khan, etc. And you'll see here that the Kingdom Age is, you know, if you do the math, it's like every 56 days between each new commander. I mean, I have Leonidas listed at day 401, and this says day 401. So you don't have to just trust me. This is this is well documented. But how many days is it between the latest commander release and the next commander release? Because that might not be a 56 day window. It could be something longer than that, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. Well, if we look back to Zenobia versus Nebu right we know that one came after the other well great news uh Chiskel actually has been pretty much live streaming the release and unlock of a lot of these new commanders pretty much on day one I think there's maybe some exceptions there a few years ago but if we go in and you could see Chiskel did a live stream on October 17th 2020 where it was a Zenobia number one rank mightiest governor unlock okay cool well what about Nebu great news he streamed the Nebu unlock as well okay this was December 26th 2020 so we can ask ourselves okay how many days is it 
between October 17th, 2020 and December 26th, 2020. And the answer is 70 days. There were 70 days between the day that Chiskel unlocked Zenobia and the day that Chiskel unlocked Nebu. And I'm again, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure he unlocked both of these on day one. So even if we go back to the end of 2020, we'll see that there was about 70 days between the release of the latest commander, Zenobia, and the next commander, Nebu. So that's two weeks longer than the 56 days that we've talked about so far in this video. But what happens if we take a look at some releases from this year? So earlier this year, we got Juge Liang and we also got Huo right after that. Well, great news. Chiskel streamed that as well on day one. We have Juge Liang was released on May 22nd, 2023. And if we take a look at Huo, that live stream happened on July 31st, 2023. So how many days was it between Huo coming into the game and Juge Liang coming into the game? It was actually 70 days. That's the same number of days as we saw between Nebu and Zenobia. Okay, that's interesting, right? But how many days was it between Huo and Liu Che, who is the latest legendary commander to come into Rise of Kingdoms? Well, as you can see with Liu Che, his release was a little bit different and is actually something that we've never seen before in Rise of Kingdoms. And that was that he was given out for free early because of the five year anniversary event for Rise of Kingdoms. And he was first attainable on September 24th, 2023. So if we take a look at the difference between September 24th, 2023 and the release of Huo, which was July 31st, we'll see that there was 55 days between the release of Huo and Liu Che. Now, again, that's actually not typical, right? We got Liu Che early for a specific event. There was an actual reason why. So to be fair, we actually have to take a look at when did Liu Che's wheel actually come into the game, right? Because we know moving forward that we're not going to be getting every new commander released early for some event, right? That was a one-time thing. It was for the five-year event. They might do it for the six-year event. I don't know. But what we know for sure is that they never release new legendaries early besides that one time. So how many days was it between Huo coming into the game and the first Wheel of Fortune for Liu Che? Well, I actually streamed his first Wheel of Fortune here on the channel. And if you missed it, you probably should subscribe and click the bell so that way you don't miss it again or join my Discord because I always post over there when I go live. But I streamed this on October 24th, 2023. That was the first day that we got the Liu Che Wheel. So the number of days between Huo's Wheel of Fortune and his first initial unlock and the first Wheel of Fortune for Liu Che was actually 85 days. It was 85 five days between the first unlock of both of them. Now, again, Liu Che came a little bit early for a unique event that is probably not going to happen again for a long time. So realistically, it was about 85 days between those two releases, which is kind of a long time. Now, I'm not going to do this for every commander release. You can go back if you want to, and, and you can find out exactly how many days it was between the release of like William and whoever else, right? Like if you want to do that, you can, you could be my guest. I think what, what you'll find is that the shortest released window for new commanders is 56 days. Um, but typically it's around 70 to 85 days. I think that is the most common time frame that we see new commanders. If you go back to like Artemisia, for example, or Amanatore, I think those were some releases where it was a little bit extended. I think it was maybe a hundred days or more than that. Right? So there were some periods of time throughout rise of kingdoms history where there was a bit of a delay between new commander releases, but it's not typical. Typically we see them every 70 to 85 days. And I think that's, I mean, this is not even my opinion. It's just, it's just a fact that that is what we've seen for the latest commander releases as well. Now, some of you who are very keen and very smart may be thinking about Pyrus. You're like, wait a minute, Omnir, we got Pyrus in the summertime. What do you mean? You're not even considering Pyrus. And that's true because we shouldn't consider Pyrus. And why is that? Because a new commander is released every summer for the release of a new civilization. Pyrus is not a season of conquest commander. He is not part of the meta. He is an early game commander that is part of basically a marketing campaign for the new civilization. Okay. So Pyrus in, in my mind, um, doesn't count towards this release cycle because he's not on the same level as Liu Che. He's not part of the same camp as Huo, right? It's a completely different caliber of commander and he's released for pre KVK and season one. So you can expect every year, pretty much for the past three years, 
that will get a new gold key commander okay and again in my mind gold key commanders just they're not on the same level and we shouldn't consider them part of the release schedule so if you're a new player to the game it may feel like it was much faster this year over the past six months but that's only if you include pyrus which i don't think any serious late game player considers pyrus uh, as like a, a, a release that was significant or really moved the needle in any way. Okay. So we've come to the conclusion that just based on the data, they haven't really increased the speed of releasing new commanders. And if anything, the number of days between the wheel of Huo and Lu Che was 85. That's kind of a long time. Right. But then the question becomes is 70 days is 85 days is 56 days are those reasonable amounts of time for a new commander to come into the game and i think that is a totally separate question right from again the data they're not releasing commanders faster but is the commander release window too fast like have they been releasing commanders too fast since the beginning of the game right and from my perspective um it's maybe it's a little fast okay you know 70 days it's it's maybe a little fast i would say 85 is fine i think 56 days is definitely too fast i think that like you barely have time to even get the previous one and you just now there's a new one right i mean that is 56 days is eight weeks that's four wheels of fortune right so like you, you basically just potentially finish the wheel of the most recent release and now there's a new one i think that's too fast but for me and and maybe i'm biased because i am a content creator right i like when new things come to the game uh because it it brings hype to the game it gets people excited it's new toys to play with right like people get to see what smite damage is all about and see how the new commanders change the meta and those are things that as a content creator i'm excited about so i am i would rather it be 70 days than 85 days uh, and I would certainly rather it be 85 days than over a hundred, right? That's just, that's just me. And I think a lot of people in the community feel that way as well. I think, you know, there's been times where, um, there have been commanders that have been, uh, the latest commander for a long time. I think I mentioned, uh, Artemisia and Amanatori earlier, I think, and, and I could be wrong about those two, but I feel like those had longer, uh, windows of time where they were the latest, greatest. And if you look back on that, it was kind of boring, right? It was kind of boring. The meta didn't change for months and it's just, you know, we kind of wanted something new. So I think there's a discussion to be had about how fast commanders are coming out. Um, are they coming out faster? No. Should they come out slower? Maybe. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below and what you think about that. Okay, next let's go over the Tides of War updates. This came out just this morning, okay? And the update is gonna go live on 11.14. So that looks like about one week from the time of me recording this. And the first thing that they mentioned is the Thanksgiving event series, which I think everybody kind of expected, right? This is the time of year where we get Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and then we have Valentine's Day after that. So there's, there's a lot of holiday events coming up in the next couple of months. We're gonna be getting a Thanksgiving feast event where you prepare a hearty Thanksgiving meal and level up your feast. Uh, that's pretty much what we have seen every year. Okay. A cordial invitation. Take part in a Thanksgiving feast with your alliance. Level up your Thanksgiving feast to earn extra rewards. We've seen that before. Esmeralda's prayer. We never know when the wheel of life will stop turning. Maybe your luck can change. So this is the one where there's like three different arrows on the wheel. Okay. And you have the opportunity of unlocking, uh, you know, a city skin or maybe a epic accessory blueprint, you know, maybe some gems. Uh, I don't love this event, but we do see this once in a while and it's fine. Esmeralda's collection. Try your luck to win some of Esmeralda's riches. Okay. And then we have war of the ruins is coming back this to me. I mean, is this going to be a 7,000 gem event? Uh, for Halloween, we did not get a 7,000 gem event. So it's possible that we get a 7,000 gem event here. The Thanksgiving feast says that you're going to level up your feast. Okay. So, I mean, it looks like it is an individual event rather than an alliance event. Now they also have the cordial invitation, and this is where you actually prepare dishes for your alliance event. So there's two different components here. So don't get confused. I don't know. I, I actually, I'm the worst person to ask about 7k gem events. I don't keep track of them at all because I have no control over it, right? Like it doesn't matter to me when the next one comes because I have no say in that, right? So if it comes great, if it doesn't, then whatever you can let me know in the comment section below. Are you expecting this to be a 7k gem event? Do you think it will be? I think it's possible, but we'll have to wait and see next. We have a new season of conquest story tides of war. The pioneer event is coming soon in this story. The lost kingdom will cycle through phases known as tides. Each tide will last for four days and have its own unique mechanics. 
each tide has its own mechanic and will affect all governors in the lost kingdom plan your strategy ahead of time to get the most out of each tide now i'm wondering if this is like kvk3 where you have night and day right and there's different burn times that could be possible personal directive during each tide you can choose one of four personal directives to issue which will provide you with a unique buff for the rest of the tide oh okay that's interesting um alliance directives your alliance leader and officers will also be able to issue alliance directives with two to three unique directives per tide alliance directives will affect all members of your alliance and help shape your strategic direction okay that's pretty cool Alliance Merit Shop during the story, killing or severely wounding other governor's units will earn you merits. Merits can be used in the Alliance Merit Shop to redeem Alliance supplies. Alliance supplies can be restocked by gathering resources and defeating barbarian patrols during certain tides. So this sounds exactly like how Call of Dragons actually works. When you defeat other players in Call of Dragons, you get merits and you can use it to buy certain things. This sounds exactly the same. We already have individual credits for an Alliance Shop but this does not say individual credits. This says merit shop. So this sounds like a completely unique thing to the tides of war event. So that's going to be really interesting. And also the fact that it restocks with PVE content rather than let's say the Alliance having to spend its own merits to unlock more things, sort of like how the individual credits work. So this is going to be really interesting. And this is going to be a cool way to reward players who are actually getting a lot of kill points in KBK. So I think that's going to be cool. And I think a lot of people are going to like that next commander skill description re rework in this version we've rewritten and optimized the descriptions for virtually every commander skill note that we have not changed the actual effects of any of these skills below are some specific changes we made so okay so they're saying that they actually didn't change any of the skills so what's going to be interesting is to see how the wording of similar skills is now going to be potentially different moving forward and maybe this will provide some clarity as to why some commanders perform really well and unexpectedly well in the open field when we may expect them not to so let's see here the term normal attack damage has been replaced with normal damage and the term normal attack has been replaced by basic attack okay this is good i think that this is this has been very confusing for a lot of people um and they go on to say that the previous term normal attack damage has always included damage dealt by both normal attacks and counter attacks and if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while you know that that's the case and we felt that this term did not clearly express this idea i agree okay um because you would have normal attack damage and then you would have counter attack damage as a separate thing as a sort of sub component of that normal attack damage so the fact that we now have a basic attack and a counter attack those are the two components of what we used to call a normal attack and now it's going to be called normal damage okay so we've they basically just broken these up into individual you know terms that make a lot more sense moving forward for all commander skills we have worked to eliminate ambiguities more clearly define targets slash scopes improve readability and unify slash optimize terminology thank you we need this okay the fact that you'll get you know there's all damage and then there's archer damage and it's like okay is is archer damage just all damage if your troop is only full of archers it turns out that it's not it was just kind of like normal attack damage but all damage includes skills that so it, it was it was annoying okay so I hope that they address that here this includes things like clarifying skill conditions slash triggers more clearly stating cooldown times and durations and breaking skills into more readable chunks etc amazing I love to see this um they've done this multiple times throughout the years like there's been many different iterations of this right like most recently I think they were they um, included the underlined terms where you could tap on the underlined term and it will define what it is down below like for silence on Guan Yu for example okay so they've done this over the years they're continuing to improve that and that's good because we need it okay as previously stated these changes are purely textual and have no effect on the actual effects of these skills okay great next we have an optimization for the siege of orleans kvk added text to the aux skills interface to more clearly show when in the lost kingdoms chronicles each commander is unlocked certain skills that had no effect when equipped as aux skills can no longer be equipped as aux skills okay that's pretty good increased the writ cap to ten thousand optimized mott performance and made them more recognizable on the map i'm gonna be honest i never played siege of orleans so i don't know if any of this stuff is good or not added pyrus and pericles to the list of auxiliary commanders items one through four will apply to all lost kingdoms in siege of orleans immediately item five will only apply to lost kingdoms that begin after the update makes sense 
PC version improvements added shortcut keys to scenario battles, mainly for Soroli event series, Ian's ballads and champions of Olympia. Great. And optimized text input. Okay, cool. Optimize the performance of certain videos and interfaces. Okay. That's fine. Fixed an issue where logging in via Google was sometimes blocked. All right. Pretty sweet. Other improvements. Optimize the map overlay overlay in Arc of Osiris when zoomed out. You should now be able to see both friendly and enemy troops on the map when zoomed out. Great. Added additional information to commander skill descriptions, including target type, which identifies whether an active skill affects one or multiple targets okay i feel like that was pretty self-explanatory right if it said forward facing fan shaped area you knew it was had the ability to hit multiple targets so okay but cool more clarity is better optimize the logic of huo's dragon of the desert skill added new visual effects when huo's troops receive the bonus to skill damage that's nice in sunset canyon lost canyon and golden kingdom the skill will trigger immediately at the start of battle now to be honest, I thought that that's how it worked already. So that's really good to see. And also being able to just look at him on the field and say, oh, because of that visual effect, I know he has the bonus. You don't have to like sit there and count to 30 or whatever. That's really, really good. The hold position after attack setting will no longer automatically reset if enabled. So you can just turn this on and it will always be like that. That's awesome. Adjusted the design of the scout camp interface and optimized scouting. Awesome. Added the ability to jump to the next unclaimed tribal village after claiming a tribal village's rewards. This is great because this is just like how it worked in call of dragons. Okay. You would find a little supply crate, you would claim it. And then it would say, there's another one nearby. Do you want to go? And you hit yes. And then it shifts you over there. It sounds like this is going to be the same thing, which is amazing. I know that in my map, there's certainly still tribal villages that I have yet to claim. Now I feel like I'm being rewarded for being lazy. So this is awesome. Scouts will now hold position for 60 minutes when asked to hold position after exploring the fog and they will hold position for 60 minutes minutes when asked to hold position after exploring a mysterious cave this is amazing thank you Lilith I feel like we've been begging this forever uh before this it was I think five minutes so this is a massive bump up and that's great season length and mechanic adjustments removed the fog system from the heroic anthem story except for the prep season and extended the story's duration to 50 days now here it says the season length is 51 for heroic anthem so I don't know what they mean by extended it to 50 if it was already 51 maybe i'm misunderstanding that but removing fog is always good okay for the preparation season extended the heroic anthem uh, duration duration of 50 days okay this only applies after for seasons that happen after the update of course added a toggleable confirmation prompt when attacking or scouting a governor in your own camp awesome hopefully that helps prevent some friendly fire okay Optimize the interface of the Wheel of Fortune event. Commander skill levels displayed on the event page should now reflect the actual skill levels of the commanders you own. Do I care about that? I I mean, sure, I guess that's cool. Uh, I mean, it's again, more clarity is always better, but I guess this doesn't really matter to me that much. The Alliance mobilization event will be open to more kingdoms with the rewards adjusted depending on which season an alliance is in. Okay, that's good. Although I gotta say, I don't love this event. I really don't. It's just a busy work simulator and I, I mean whatever the cooldown for accepting immigrants to your kingdom has been reduced from one minute to 30 seconds awesome adjusted the order of the reward buffs in the eve of the crusade season of conquest event the fifth and sixth buffs have switched places what were those i don't even remember what they were they're pretty irrelevant if i remember correctly i think one was like experience gain or something like that i don't remember in case you guys are wondering like the buffs that you get from either the crusade like virtually never matter like getting the difference between three percent all damage and two percent all damage like that's not going to change the outcome of the kvk it's just not okay so these events like people always like to talk about the eve of the crusade and oh we're in first place like literally doesn't matter it may feel like it matters in the moment or like if it's your first kvk it might feel like it matters and it gives you some level of an idea of how active a kingdom might be but like for example my kingdom that we're in like we typically aren't that active during Eve, either the crusade and we have a pretty good track record of winning kvks so yeah i don't think this really matters at all uh the olympia token shop will be open for a limited time so you can you can spend any unused olympia tokens you have okay okay um i'm gonna be honest i never play champions of olympia so i don't know what to expect from here but cool so that's everything in the patch notes update um i think that i'm most excited for the skill description rework 
and also uh, some of these other improvements over here like the logic and the, these little quality of life things are nice um most of the other stuff here i don't care that much about the thanksgiving events like we've seen this every year so it is what it is but i figured i would cover it here in the video for those of you that might be curious but guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kings players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kings video comment down below your thoughts on everything in the upcoming thanksgiving update and also let me know what you think about the current release schedule for new commanders do you feel like it's a little bit too fast or do you feel like they should leave it how it is i'm really curious to see what you think down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace